We are not having your parents in this room. If you are not happy with that, you get out of here. What? Why? Why are you rejecting my parents like that? Shut up! I just don't like them. Mom said so too. She said they are nasty. I'm not having people like that in this room. How? How can you say something like that? They are my parents. I am so sad that I feel a tear fall. My husband and I loved each other, but if he is saying things like this, I don't think I can be with him anymore. Anyway, you are not bringing your parents here. Like I said, if you are not going to listen to me, you are leaving. I don't think I can understand my husband anymore. He says he hates my parents and that they are nasty. That's out of a question. Okay, I'm leaving. You're going to regret this, you know. My name is Sally and I'm a 34 years old office worker. It's been five years since I married my husband Kyle. We both work. But to save up, we are renting a cheap room in an apartment in the suburb. As we've been saving up properly for the last five years, the amount has added up to quite a lot. Yes, I worked hard for this. Looking at the figures, I moved. Then I see Kyle slowly coming towards me. He hesitantly asks me, Hey! Our savings have added up quite a lot, so maybe we can move soon? The rent is cheap here, but it takes a long time to commute, so I want to move to a place where the access is good. His expression looks like a lost puppy, begging me to take him home. Well, I thought we could save up a little more. I'm not sure. I do understand what Kyle is saying. It currently takes 50 minutes to get to work. So when we work over time, it's quite late by the time I get home. Because I do the cooking and laundry after that, I always go to sleep late. I don't think this is a healthy way to be living. So I do get his point. I had fun using the commute time effectively when I was younger, but after entering my 30s, the long commute time has become a slight pain. You'd prefer to get home early too, wouldn't you? When you go out for drinks, you wouldn't have to worry about the time as much either. That's true. As we live far away from the downtown area, we have to pay a lot for a cab if we miss the last train. Kyle and I both love to drink and we often go out with friends and colleagues. So it would be great if we didn't need to worry about that time. Yeah, maybe it's time for us to move. I decide to agree with my husband. He seems very happy and says, Yes, thank you. I'm gonna find a great place. I decided the room that we are living in right now. But as the cheap rent was a priority, you couldn't say that it was a comfortable room. We got used to it after living here a while, but I agree Kyle must have had complaints. For this room, it was mostly up to me and I didn't accept many of his requests, but he was happy to agree to live here, so this time I think I would trust him and let him decide. So I leave it up to him to find a place. Sometimes he puts himself first, but most of the time he is kind and think of what's best for the two of us. I'm sure he will find a room that works for the both of us. That's what I thought. Hmm, this place looks good, but I like this one too. Saying this, he is looking at pamphlets that he got from the realtor. I take a look. What? $200? And $300 for this one? 
That's too cheap. That wouldn't even be enough for the comfortable room for one person, I think. And I take a closer look. No, wait a moment. Kyle, don't you think these places are a little too expensive? The pamphlet showrooms with friends as expensive as $2,000 or $3,000 a month. He is looking at rooms in high rise condos. What do you mean? These are the sort of places we should be looking at. I can't believe it. There should be many rooms that are closer to the city but cheaper. I suddenly become worried whether it will be alright to leave this up to Kyle. Speaking to him, it feels like he is not looking for rooms on his own. His mother is stepping in and saying things about the rooms, and they are discussing what would be best for us. One day, I come home early as I didn't need to work overtime. There, I found Kyle and his mother, Patricia, looking at pamphlets and chatting happily. Patricia looks at me and says, Oh, you're home already? I wanted to keep looking at more rooms. I don't want to see you either, Patricia. My mother-in-law and I don't exactly get along. She bullied me every time we meet face to face. I go to my room, put down my bag, and get changed. When I already hear Patricia at the door saying, See you soon, Kyle. I work overtime more than my husband, so it seems she comes here when I'm not home yet. But why on earth is she trying to find a room for us? Is she considering living with us? No way. I have to stop that with all my power. Even though I said I would leave it up to Kyle, I don't think I can agree to a room with such an expensive rent. It's true, I tend to be more frugal than others, but of course you wouldn't want to spend too much. Kyle doesn't seem to mind at all, and he continues to look at these expensive rooms. Okay, this place looks right. It's got everything we need, and it's not too expensive either. He seems excited and lifts the pamphlet high in the air. I take it and look at the price. It says $3,000 per month. What about this place is not too expensive exactly? I've never lived in a place this expensive. Is it really worth it? I feel very hesitant. Hey, don't you think this is a little too expensive? What? No, we can pay for this. We have our savings. Yeah, maybe that's true, but this place has great security and the access is amazing. There is a supermarket nearby and post office and bank is closed too. It's in a great location and I think it's amazing. It's spacious too, so I think the red is actually on the cheap side with everything considered. He's making a presentation as if he's a realtor. I don't think I can stop him anymore. I give in to his passion, and we decide to sign the contract for the room. This is how our life in the high-rise condo begins. True, the room is a great place to live in. However, I don't think I've ever felt comfortable in this room since I moved in. Patricia comes over very often and stays until late. Kyle, today we are having steak and fries. Yes, my favorite. Thanks, Mom. I made my special soup too, so let me know if you want more. She uses the built-in kitchen as if it's her own. Oh, I haven't made any for you, Sally. So you make sure you cook your own food. Patricia glares at me as she says this. No problem. I don't want to eat your cooking anyway. 
But the pans and knives and cutting board that you used are left in the sink, you know. Why do I have to start my time at home after work doing all the dishes? I almost say this, but this will only make the matter worse. So I shut up and go to the sink. This is so irritating. It seems another reason why she comes to our room often is because she wants to boast about the high rise condo to her neighbors. For a while, Kyle continues to invite his mother over. As for my parents, they haven't come to this room even once. Whenever I try to talk about my parents, Kyle always changes the subject. Kyle's dad actually came over once. But he says, I don't think I can really relax here, and never came again. Why won't Patricia be like him too? I'm honestly not happy at Kyle's attitude, but I did say I would leave it up to him to find a room, and I also did agree to living here, so I feel like I cannot say too much to him. To be honest, I thought he would consider time and life with me as a priority, but ever since we moved into this room, I kind of feel like his attitude toward me has changed. He used to be so kind to me, and I'm sure he would have said something to Patricia if she was mean to me. But now, he never stops her, and even when she says terrible things to me, he ignores it. As if it's none of his business. That's why Patricia often gets carried away, and her bullying is becoming worse. You're home already? Are you really even working? You're not lying to us and fooling around, are you? Of course not. I have a proper job, you know. Since we've moved here, the office has become closer. So, of course, I would be home earlier than before. That's not my problem. Kyle and I are in the middle of dinner. I can't stand the sight of you, so go to your room or get out of here. How can you say that? I live here too, you know. You don't even live here. Why do I have to listen to you? I'm so angry that I snap back at her. Kyle is in a rage and said, How can you say that to my mom? You just do as she says. The two of them are both shouting at me. I'm so tired from work and I don't want to go through this right now, so I decided to go outside and eat on my own. Late at night, when I think Patricia has left, I return home. This is pointless. I'm still home late. Just like when I was doing overtime and going home late to my old apartment. I feel this is too much and ask Kyle to come to the living room so that we can talk. He looks annoyed. Hey, can you ask your mom to not come over too often? For real? You suck, you know. Why treat my mom like that? She's the one who should be treating me better, you know. Don't be stupid. She comes over to help with the housework. We should be grateful. Okay then. Let me call my parents over sometime. My mom is a housewife, so she's good with housework too. Kyle looks furious and he screams. We're not having your parents in this room. If you're not happy with that, you get out of here. What? Why? Why are you rejecting my parents like that? Shut up! I just don't like them. Mom says so too. She says they are nasty. I'm not having people like that in this room. How? How can you say something like that? They are my parents. I am so sad that I feel a tear fall. My husband and I loved each other, but if he's saying things like this, I don't think I can be with him anymore. 
Anyway, you're not bringing your parents here. Like I said, if you're not gonna listen to me, you're leaving. I don't think I can understand my husband anymore. He says he hates my parents and that they are nasty. That's out of question. Okay, I'm leaving. You're going to regret this, you know. Kyle snorts. Huh? Regret what? Just get out of here. You're the one who's going to regret this. He must be crazy to say something like this. I pack my bags and head to my parents' house. Once I'm there, they drown me with questions. Why am I here with so many bags? What happened between me and Kyle? We just moved to our new room. But in the end, they embrace me and welcome me home. I didn't know. I can't believe what Kyle did to you. Why would he say something like that to you, Sally? Well, we actually weren't very fond of his mother, to be honest. Yes, she's... I don't know, she has no class. But for matters like this, I think you need to talk to each other. Sally, we were going back. Hmm? We are going to speak to Kyle. With this, Dad drives Mom and I back to the condo. I only lived in this condo for two months, and now I'm back here. I open the keys at the main entrance. We take the elevator and land on the 15th floor. I put the keys to the room in the door and open it. But something feels different. I see a woman's coat on the floor. Whose coat is this? I rush inside and open the living room door. There, I see my husband and an unknown woman naked, and they are right in the middle of business. I stand there with the door open, and they scream. What are you doing? Sally, why, why are you? I thought you left. Kyle, what is the meaning of this? You brought your dad? The woman with him screams. Shut up, will you? We are looking away, so you both put some clothes on. We turn around and wait for them to get ready. After that, we sit down and ask them questions. It seems they work together and that they've been having this affair for several months now. In other words, Kyle wanted to move closer to the office so he could see her more often. Unbelievable. I guess there is no need to discuss anything. My dad is looking at Kyle in disgust. My lawyer will reach out to you about divorce and compensation. Kyle is turning blue. The woman said, Whatever. You are renting this room in your name, right, Kyle? We can live together then, she says. She doesn't seem to understand the situation at all. Yo, we could. Kyle seems too proud to speak the truth. Goodbye, then. Oh, and I'm taking the furniture and home application that I paid for with me, okay? I say, and I leave the room with my parents. Several days later, I call a moving company to move my things, and I say goodbye to the high-rise condo. I request a divorce and compensation to both Kyle and his girlfriend through my lawyer. Kyle was unwilling to pay at first, but the lawyer I hired was excellent. So all he could do was answer my request in the end. It's been a month since then, and I receive a call from an unknown number. I answer and find myself speaking to Patricia. Sally, I'm so glad you answered. Patricia, why are you calling me? Oh, I wanted to say I'm so sorry. I didn't know. 
I didn't know that you're the one who put most of your saving into the rent for the condo. I want to apologize. Will you please come back? Kyle can't afford the rent and he might get kicked out. The new girlfriend that he has, she suddenly quit her job and isn't even doing the housework. She doesn't do as I say and just the other day, she nearly slapped me. It was terrifying. I realized it was so much better with you around. This is making me feel sick. She just wants things to go her own way. I'm sorry, but that's none of my business. You figure it out yourselves. Goodbye. Wait, please! I hung up and blocked her straight away. According to the mutual friend, it seems Kyle couldn't pay the rent any longer and move out the condo. As a result, his girlfriend dumped him too. Patricia had been boating to her neighbor about her son's life in a high-rise condo, but as he had to move out only after several months, and because they found out that I had been paying most of the rent, they are now laughing at her and will never take her seriously again. It seems she doesn't leave her house anymore. Serves her right. As for me, I've moved into a small apartment where I'm living a simple life and I'm saving up again. It's adding up to quite an amount so I may even be able to choose a semi-retired life. I wonder why you would make it look as though you earn it when it's really all thanks to your wife that you're living a luxurious life. Kyle should have just been grateful. In any case, I'm glad Sally got to leave her terrible ex-husband. I hope she meets someone much better in the future. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.